Hey everybody, my name is Pluto, and today we're going to be commentating another video. Today we have Cez Native Reminiscence once again. This time we have, uh, I believe the stage is called Vanished Wastelanders, uh, the Red Coin Star, the End of the War, uh, also combined with 100 coins, but um, you'll see later why combining this 100 coins isn't really anything important. Um, yeah, this is Course 15 in Cez Native Reminiscence. It's one of the hardest levels in the game, uh, third or second hardest because uh, with a couple nerfs, it's debatable whether or not Course 12 is even harder than this or not. Uh, so that's a relief because Course 12 is not very fun, but you know, that'll be a problem for another video <laughs> or another stream. So yeah, this is Course 15. It's made by Akaro and it's a pretty interesting stage. I think in hindsight, I like it more than I liked it when I was grinding it because this grind went very poorly and in all honesty, there are quite a few things about this stage that I am not the biggest fan of. Uh, but we'll get into them as we get into them. So, this stage I like to describe as kind of like uh, Gate of the Evil 2. It has a lot of jumps that are reminiscent of Gate of the Evil in my opinion. At the very least, the difficulty structure and the, um, you know, the kind of just like the, I guess almost the style. I guess they're both made by Akro to be fair, which does make them a little similar. But for the most part, it's more so just like this level uh, just feels very much like it. It has like the wall kick sections. Uh, some some slope shenanigans, uh, some very distinct sections. It's all just like, it's got just kind of that vibe that Gate of the Evil had. Uh, however, um, this stage is a bit harder than Gate of the Evil without the cheese because I haven't really commented on this at all, but um, if you've only seen my video for Gate of the Evil, then you might not know that Morningstorm discovered some pretty major cheeses in that stage, which makes it significantly easier than it used to be. It's still very difficult, don't get me wrong, and it's still a very oppressive accomplishment. However, Gate of the Evil intended is kind of re rendered obsolete because, well, the cheese exists. So in a way, the stage is kind of cathartic because it almost feels like kind of getting that like Gate of the Evil tier accomplishment back uh, only harder. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, I enjoyed this grind a lot less than Gate of the Evil. And um, part of that was the choking and the deaths, but also part of that was this star path right here. This is the star two path, which contains um, some pretty interesting jumps. But you'll quickly find, but well, if you attempt this, you might find that one of them's a little ridiculous. Um, this first jump isn't too bad. I do crouches, so that way I can uh, line up Mario's hat with a certain uh, texture, and then I can just slide across this. Now this jump here is a bit unfair. This setup I'm using here was developed by Sigo too, uh, so thanks for that. However, there's a bit of an issue with this, and that is that uh, even with this setup, occasionally what will happen is... Uh, Mario will simply punch slide along this slope. You need the C up slide to slide because it'll uh, increase Mario's speed cap so he can get a little more speed. However, uh, there's a chance that when you push B to cancel the slide, that Mario, instead of canceling the slide and going straight into a butt slide, Mario will instead just punch along the slope straight into the quicksand. As far as I'm aware, there's no way to avoid this 100% of the time. A setup can make it less uh, happen less frequently, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, sometimes you will just die to that jump, and there's nothing you can do about it. And combined that with this jump right here, where you need to do this very tricky momentum jump off that slope there with that triple jump where if you're too high you'll cliff to the wall, or if you're too low you'll get your jump eaten, uh, just makes this star path a, a real nightmare to get attempts past. Um, however, I will say that I got fairly consistent on it being able to get past it uh, very frequently uh, towards the end of the grind, However, it's still a very frustrating star path, and it's quite annoying to lose attempts to. Uh, even though it doesn't take that long to get here, we're only four minutes into the attempt. So, yeah, it's it's just a little frustrating and annoying. Here we have this jump, which is, I think, supposed to be a reference to Bonds Towards the Future. At the very least, it's very reminiscent of a certain jump of Bonds Towards the Future, and if you're familiar with that stage, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's on the path to the satellite. Um... Here we have this little section, which is a kind of cool wall kick thing. Uh, there's just a red coin to get. You might notice that the state has 25 red coins, which is a lot, and this is kind of tying back into the 100 coin issue, where uh, 50 of our coins are going to be gotten automatically through reds, which is not which is kind of par for the course for um, these stages that have a lot of reds, where hundreds is kind of trivial because you already get so many coins. But in this stage, you're going to see it's especially trivial uh, as we go forward. That jump is not nearly as precise as it looks. You just need to be a little careful because of the corner physics. And then these slopes are actually pretty easy to maneuver on. They're almost like weirdly slippery in the sense that like uh, 
it's a little tricky to maneuver on them, but they're not really going to like force you off them or anything. You just have to be a little careful. And as you can see here, we're really putting those 25 reds to good use with uh, one red per wall kick. Just a nice and quick sequence of them. Boom. And that is the star two path, and we are now going to jump back down. Uh, there's five different star paths, and but they're really split up into three uh, different sections. So this, there's the star two path, there's the star one path, and then star three, four, and five kind of conf kind of uh, tie all together into one big star path because uh, you can't really separate them. You kind of have to do them all at once. So we just did the star two path. Now we're gonna head over to the four, five, and three path, which is uh, the order that you do them in. So come up here. It's worth noting that uh, I'm going to do a jump that's unnecessary here. Uh, you don't actually need to do this uh, wall kick little, this like little wall kick hole. Uh, the reason why I opted to do it is because I basically never died to it and it's a little faster I think than going under. So I, I figured I might as well go for this since it's not really difficult and it makes the attempt slightly faster. Very menial thing. This Kuramame, he's not too threatening, but you do need to watch out for him because he's he can fuck you up. Uh, it's just good to bait him real quick and then go. Uh, pretty simple bait, just gotta walk kick into the wall. This cone actually pretty much always gives you a very natural angle for these wall kicks, so you don't really need to worry about this jump too much. I D-pad up so that way I can easily reverse my angle. And that gives me a nice angle so that way I can end up on this platform. And then I can jump straight to these cones. So this is the star 4 path, but uh, unlike the other star paths, we don't actually need to do too much of this one. Star 4 is already quite a, sh a, a, a short star, but we actually just need to do this one jump, and then one jump back for the red. Um, and then we're actually already going to be moving on to the star 5 path, which is actually going to be very reminiscent of Gate of the Evil. The stage actually has references to a lot of stages, um, uh, Dream Edition stages, uh, obviously IOF stages, but there's also uh, references to Endless Journey. Now, I have not uh, played Endless Journey, nor have I really seen any of it, but I believe Akuro has a stage in that game, and I think this I think this level does reference it at some point. I don't know what exactly is the Akuro reference, but I know that it exists, so just be aware of that. Now we got this long jump here. These jumps are kind of tricky, but these platforms are actually wide enough that it's not too difficult to do. You just have to get a sense for how far away from the, they are from each other, so you know how much to uh, hold forwards. When jumping down here, you need to watch out because there's a ton of invisible walls down here. Uh, thankfully, they're the type of invisible walls where you can just opt for a ledge grab, and that will pretty consistently avoid them. So. There's going to be a jump that isn't too interesting coming up, so I might as well explain the whole hundred thing. You might notice that I'm already up to 65 coins. Um, this stage has a ton of coins, uh, just an absolute ton of coins. There's coin rings all over the place, there's, there's columns of five, but the most notable ones are that there's columns of five coins in uh, wall kick sequences. There's even two at the very end of the stage when you're climbing up to reds. This is why hundreds in the stage is kind of trivial. Because when you're going for reds, you kind of need to get hundreds. Because if you don't plan out where you can get hundreds, it's very possible that you get hundreds during one of these walking sequences. And that can be really, really dangerous. So it's important that when you're going for the star, that you plan out where you're going to get hundreds. Thankfully with this route, there happens to be a big range where depending on the number of coins, I will either get it earlier or later, but I'll never spawn it over a place that's dangerous. This walking sequence is a little tricky because there's not a whole lot of camera angles that you can viably use here. I opt for these setups uh, and using the shadows to determine where I am, but the main threat is the depth pixel, lip collision, whatever you want to call it, where you hit the very edge of a wall and that doesn't allow you to wall kick. So you need to, you need to very much watch out for that or else you're going to be in some serious danger. There I also happen to get a firsty, which is pretty unlucky. Thankfully, uh, because I pause buffered it, I was able to hold a sharp left angle and that actually was allowed me to survive even uh, though I got the first day. You do need to be careful when pause buffering though because when you're ledge grabbing you're going to be holding down and when you pause while holding down that actually buffers the down input in the, in the pause menu which has the potential to make you exit course. Excuse 
excuse my sniffles. I don't know why I'm so sniffly. I'm not sick, to my knowledge. Here we have this little... this little thing. <laughs> some people call it like an upside down Among Us guy. Uh, I think uh, some people call it like Strong Bad from Homestar Runner. Some people call it the MF Doom mask. Whatever you want to call it, it's a thing. Not too difficult, just gotta have the proper angle. Let it grab on the quicksand. Not too difficult. Alright. So, here a new threat will show itself, and that is the Death Plane. If, you don't, if you're not sure what a Death Plane is, think of it like quicksand that extends infinitely upwards. So, pretty much if you uh, go above it, Mario's gonna, it's gonna activate a Fade Out, which will make Mario die, pretty much. This is gonna kick you out of the level. Uh, yeah, so, these triangles you just have to completely avoid. So as for attempts on this level, uh, as you can see, um, my wor two worst chokes were 224s. Besides those 224s, the worst chokes I had were like, I want to say like 7 or 8 different 16 out of 25s, uh, most of which died to one particular jump, which frustrates me a lot, and we'll get to it when we get to it, which uh, will actually be in a little bit, but because there's actually quite a bit to the Star 5 path, because this is the Star 5 path if you don't know. Uh, we're gonna do almost all of it, but we're gonna skip before the very extended ending of it. So yeah. But yeah. Um, so, realistically it didn't go that bad, but the main reason why the, why the chokes were so frustrating was because a lot of the chokes fell, in a sense, undeserved, or at the very least they felt like they happened to things that wouldn't normally happen. Like, when I choke, I usually try to justify it by saying I died to something hard, but the problem with that strategy is that when you die to something easy, it makes it really hard to justify in your head, and it makes it very easy to get frustrated. So, while one of these isn't too bad and I can laugh it off, even a couple aren't too bad, when it's happening non-stop and seemingly the whole grind, that really makes me angry. And for that reason, I got really upset at this grind, and I was very, very frustrated basically all the time. It was one of just like the most annoying and frustrating grinds, which is why when I got it, I tweeted out like this is... Uh, excuse me, this is like the most annoying thing I've ever done because I just got really, really annoyed on this one. And that's unfortunate because, in a sense, I do feel like this game is very overhated, but uh, there's kind of a degree to which, with this design of Red Coin Stars, there comes this problem where uh, sometimes you have these stages where it's just possible to get stuck forever because you just get in this mental block of choking over and over. And I think that's just a flaw of the style of Red Coin Star, which, um, while I do enjoy this hack a lot, and I enjoyed IOF, I enjoyed Treasure World, I do wish that they would um, switch up from this Red Coin Star style. I feel like it's getting a little bit stale, and I'm not saying that just because it's hard. I'm saying that more so because when every hack starts to do it, it loses its luster, it becomes less special, and it becomes less interesting. I feel like it kind of locks the game in the cycle of every level feeling the same, where you do the normal five or six stars, and then you do reds, which is doing every star, and it's way harder than anything else, you know? And you can see that by looking at, like, the top 120 stars, the hardest stars list, you can just see how much harder reds tends to be than everything else. And I feel like, um, while I do like a lot of the jumps in these stages, I feel like they're very prone to frustrating the player. And if, uh, these, like, kind of JP, uh, 182 style hacks continue, I would really like to see, um, them be, uh, them switch it up a little more, switch up the style. While I do like this, and I do think this hack is an improvement on IOF, I just want something different. And, yeah. I think that's I think that's fair. But, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions, you know? So, regardless, with that kind of elaborate slope section that isn't that difficult then, we have this. So, if you are looking at these platforms, you might recognize them vaguely. Uh, that is because this is a reference to Rambi's Reverie. Um... Pretty much exactly <laughs> these exact jumps were in Rambi's Reverie, uh, that kind of triple jump dive, and then this very precise long jump. This long jump is really, really, really precise. You need to have a really good chain in order to make it. That was basically a perfect chain, by the way, so it just went amazingly. This lava bounce here is actually very awkward. I deliberately let go of the analog stick for a couple frames so that way. Uh, it kind of gives me a more natural angle where I can just curve around the wall and hit the lava again. But that is that is just 100% a muscle memory jump. You just have to go do it like over and over again until you get a feel for it. 
and I'm shocked I never died to it. There's so many hard jumps in the stage that I never died to, and then I spent like the whole grind dying to easy jumps. That shit's so annoying, dude. It's like, let me die to the fucking jumps that are hard. Let me die to the jumps that kill me over and over again in practice. It's like, anything that's hard, I'm a, I'm an amazing player at. I can do it consistently. Anything that's easy, it's like I started playing this game a month ago. It's very frustrating sometimes. Here I'm going to spawn hundreds in this place, but this is actually the best outcome because it prevents me from having to do one of the turns because the star cutscene will actually turn Mario around for me. Uh, all you have to do to avoid the death barrier here is you just need to crawl the turn. It's very risky to <laughs> turn, like, you know, without crawling because... It's very easy to ledge grab, and this platform is so thin that if you ledge grab, no matter what you do, you're going to be over the death barrier. So do not ledge grab, because as soon as you get up, you will die. Slowly walk along. It's worth noting that when we dropped from those cubes, we uh, pretty much ended the start 5 path. Now we're on the start 3 path. The start three passes is mostly defined by one big jump, which you'll see, which it looks pretty cool. A ground pound facing towards the wall there, because in the event that I miss the ground pound to grab the metal cap, I want to make sure that I do not uh, die. So I face it that way, so that way if I do end up missing the metal cap, I can simply just uh, do an extra bounce and the cap will bounce off the wall instead of falling off into the quicksand. Because caps will float on lava, but they'll sink in quicksand, so you gotta be careful for that. If you do it fast enough, you'll only take one damage here. Well, three damage, but one lava bounce where you don't have the metal cap. Here we have these tricky crossovers. Most of these are pretty normal, but this one in particular is a bit tricky because the way that these crossovers are lines means that it's a lot, it's a lot more reasonable to uh, do like a hurdle, like jump over it, the kind of hurdle wall kicks. At least that's what I call them. I propose the name hurdle wall kicks for this type of wall kick that was kind of started by like the lighthouse path in Toasted Coast, but I don't think it ever really caught on, but it's my favorite name for them. I feel like it's the most applicable. This last arch here actually has some death barrier, and there's like a quicksand patch to go over it, but you can just go around it. I didn't figure that out until near the end of the grind, by the way, like the last day, so <laughs> that was kind of silly. Here we have this like triple, uh, these like slide triple jump things. Uh, pretty much all these are are just memorizing what direction you hold. The main threat is having your triple jump eaten by the slope from having too much speed. So pretty much the entire thing you're doing there is just trying to avoid that outcome. It looks very impressive, but uh, once you get the feel for it, it's actually quite easy. At least easy relative to the other jumps on the stage. At least in my opinion. Depth perception is a real monster here. You want to be careful, so uh, just turn the camera a bit to make sure you're actually in the correct position, and you'll safely land on that. <laughs> These jumps are a bit threatening. You kind of have to watch out for them. Uh, just go for ledge jumps here. The only one that's a like really scary is this one, because if you miss this triple jump, you're in a pretty bad position. But just go full throttle, and you'll be fine. land on these, turn around, and jumping down right here sends us back into this place. And if you've been paying attention, you should recognize this because this is near the beginning of the stage. So now we're done with the star 4, 5, 3 path. So we've done everything except for the star 1 path. So we got to go there now for the last six reds. This is just a little mini reclimb. It's a very small reclimb. Excuse me, nothing major at all. <laughs> Don't really have too much to say because it's a fucking reclimb of easy jumps. <laughs> I should clarify that whenever I say easy like that, I mean it relatively. Like, I'm not saying, like, it's easy compared, like, just easy in general, like in a vacuum. I'm saying it's easy compared to everything else. In the stage, that is. This line of coins here, uh, lines you up pretty good for this chain long jump. Just gotta be a little careful. Uh, 
It's weird because I spent this whole grind being so frustrated, but I, I was like very addicted to it. I think it's kind of a sunk cost fallacy thing. I always encourage people to uh, play what they want, but there's a degree of relief that you get from finishing a grind you really hate that kind of makes it addicting in a sense. I try to enjoy the game as much as possible, but the, the unfortunate reality is that in my current such life situation, I'm not the happiest. I recently went through like this very bad bout of depression, especially with this grind going so badly. And the grind going badly didn't really contribute to my depression in like any super strong way. It's more so just like it made me feel even more, uh, I guess, isolated than I already did feel. I don't really want to get too personal with this because you know it's not really, it's not really something that like maybe you guys might hear about, but. I'm doing better now, and I know that like a year from now, everything's gonna be way better. I'm gonna be on HRT and stuff. I'm really excited for that. But just having a grind go badly is just really frustrating, and it really kind of fuels those depressive thoughts for me. And you know, but there's a reason I still play Mario, and that's because I like the game a lot. <laughs> this jump's a little hard, but it's actually—I don't think I ever died to that jump once. Not even when I was going for Star One. I just like the front cam there, I think it makes it easy. Um, but yeah, what I was saying was, um, I really like Mario 64. I know sometimes I get frustrated at it, but the the, the reality is, is that, like, without this game, like, <laughs> this game has given me so much. It's given me a community of people that constantly support me. It's given me a hobby that I'm constantly getting better at and feel like other people want me to succeed in. It's given me a way to you know, express my love of just gaming as a whole, and just like, it's given me something to stream and have and feel like I'm interesting, you know? I just love every aspect of the game. I'm so happy that this is the game that I chose to get good at, because I feel like, in a sense, it makes me unique, and maybe that's a bit attention-seeking, wanting to be different or unique from other people, but there's a, a degree to which I kind of like that. I like the fact that I feel like what I do is special. I like feeling like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm unique, you know? I, it just feels good. It, it, it makes me feel, <laughs> you know, it's almost like Mario City 4 is the one place where I can express myself. Like, I can express who I am. I can express what I'm about. I can express my personality. I can express, you know, my gender identity, my sexuality. I can express all of that stuff in this community, and I can just express my passion for video games and platformers and getting good at something in the game itself. So in that sense, it's kind of like Mario 4 was like something perfect for me because of what it's given me and what it's allowed to do both in the game and out of the game. And uh, for that reason, I don't want to ever stop playing it. I love the game, and even if I get mad at it occasionally, None of that will ever uh, outweigh just how much appreciation I have for it and how happy I am playing it, even if in some moments there's less enjoyable times, you know? Of course, I can't talk about my life forever because this is a commentary for a star, it is not an autobiography. So here we are with this jump. This jump is like kind of weird, there's a scuttlebug, but... <laughs> Yeah, these yellow slopes are a bit uh, slippery, so you gotta watch out for them. But the main tricky thing is going back. So you can jump back down to the slope, but that's a little unreliable because it's so precise. So I opted for this strategy where you just do a jump dive, but it is very scary. You gotta be really careful when doing that. You have to hold back at the perfect time or else you're gonna overshoot it or undershoot it alternatively. It's very, very scary. Do a double jump across here, and now we're in this walking section. So, uh, the visibility on this walking section is at like an all-time low. Thankfully, uh, you can kind of see at the top, so you can kind of use that to get a rhythm for it. And then once you have a rhythm, you can just go back and forth until, or, well, I count, like I say, like one, two, one, two, and then that kind of helps me count. You might also see Maria do it because she takes that habit from me. Uh, maybe other people do it, but those are just the two I know. I know I do it, and I know that Maria does it. And it makes it easier for us to walk it like that. Although Maria does it for like every walking sequence. 
So they already do a momentum long jump instead of a chain long jump. That's because I died doing the chain long jump, so don't be like me. <laughs> that was really unfortunate, that really pissed me off. I also died in this walking section because I couldn't get any sort of rhythm and then I missed the first E. Thankfully immediately here I got the first E to make it over. And then this one is less uh, precise. Once you've done that, you can ledger up here, and this long jump is not tight at all. Uh, it's actually, you actually have to lose speed in this long jump so you don't overshoot it. That's a quick ledge grab. At this point I was a little nervous. I mean, you can kind of see it in my webcam that my hands were a little shaky during that cutscene, but uh, my nerve control is pretty good. I think I there was a degree to which I didn't really care about the star anymore because it's like, I felt like I had been so cheated out of the star over and over again that like, it kind of felt as if, um, regardless of if I got it, it didn't really matter too much because like, in a way, I felt like I already kind of proved that I can do it. Like, when you get a star, it's kind of like you're proving that you can do it, you're proving your accomplishment to other people, and you're proving it to yourself, but in this, I felt like I already could do it. I felt that when I got the 24s. It wasn't like RR, where it's like, in RR, it's like when I died, it was like, okay, I, I, like, I just couldn't handle the pressure, I couldn't handle the nerves, you know? I can't quite, I can't quite keep up that consistency when, the, when things get serious. Here, it's more like, I could totally keep it up when it got serious, I just really shit the bed and made a really dumb mistake. So, if, in a way, it's like, I, it almost, it almost felt like I was getting the star for a third time instead of I was getting the star, <laughs> which... Maybe it's a bad mindset. You shouldn't. Ne you should never really get in that mindset where you're like, "Oh, I deserve this," because then it's like, you're gonna like, you're gonna get really mad at the game if you feel like you deserve a star because nobody deserves an accomplishment, really. No one is okay. That's bad wording. Nobody deserves an accomplishment that they don't have yet. If you don't have something, you don't deserve it. Uh, at the very least, in Mario 64 and video games, if we're talking like real life, there's plenty of things that people deserve and don't have, such as basic human rights. But Video games are different from real life, you know, so <laughs> I just want to clarify because You know, I'm I'm not a I'm not a dumb bigot, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, so this walking section is pretty familiar. It's a walking section that we did to enter star 2 uh, This is pretty much the end of the star. There's only one more jump after this and it's just a very elaborate walking sequence well Elaborate's the right word. It's it is the wrong word. It's more so just a very long walking sequence that has like no variance, and you can actually see it right there. Instead of going to that platform in the back, we're instead gonna go up this walking section. It might look a little tricky, but in reality, uh, you can just hold up here because uh, there's no corner physics here because of the orientation that these walls are. So that's about it for the grind. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. I hope you enjoyed the star. And I'll see you all in the next level, in the next stage, in the next commentary, whatever's next. I'll see you. Maybe it'll even be a KBRX world record, but that won't be a commentary because I don't commentate world records. So, that's about it. See ya. Two, one, two. <sighs> I, I don't even fucking care. <laughs>